Hey guys, just got back to the house from a long day in a server room where I worked on a Lieber unit and it had a semi-hermetic Carlisle compressor. Well, I had two of them, but I did some repairs on one of them and I brought home one of the old compressor valves. I think it's made by Mueller Refrigeration, but the real reason I wanted to bring this here and show it is because of just the size of it. It makes a great cross section of the inside and it, the way it operates. Um, these types of valves, uh, this isn't technically a king valve, but it operates pretty much the same way. And the whole concept of those types of multi-position valves really kicked my butt, and I think kick a lot of people's butt the first time they may come across them if they haven't been shown um, by somebody else. So we'll go ahead and we'll go through how these actually work. And once once you see that, it really isn't that hard, and they're actually very useful in the Before field. Before I get too in depth into the anatomy of the actual valve and the function. Really quickly just want to list the four positions that this valve is designed to be put into. Okay, there's really three, but I've split one of them into two, and I'll explain that later on in the video. But the basic four functions of the valve are fully back-seated, mid-seated, front-seated, and cracked off the back seat. Just a quick view from the top, you can see that it's a brass body. It receives an inch and an eighth suction line would enter right here. You have a four hole bolt pattern. There would be a gasket underneath here, forming the seal between the valve and the actual compressor. You have a threaded stem assembly here. The stem is what opens and shuts the plunger of the valve. The threads here are just for the dust cap that usually covers this. Normally these valves will come from the factory with a plug here. The plug can be removed and you can add whatever direction or style of fitting you'd like if you want to have service ports to be able to put gauges on. Under normal operation, if we just want the compressor to run and for low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor to run through the inside of this valve, out the back, directly into the compressor, in that situation, this valve needs to be fully back seated. Back seated, all that means is that this stem is fully in its counterclockwise position, backed all the way out until it stops. When that stops, what that's telling us is that the plunger is all the way back, allowing full unobstructed flow from the opening, from the inlet of the valve, out the outlet. Conversely, if we want to, for some reason, isolate the compressor and we have another one of these valves on the discharge side that we can also close off, this action would be called front seating. Front seating would be going fully clockwise with the stem until the plunger fully seats in the opening of the valve, preventing any more flow to be conveyed from the suction line to the outlet of the valve. Now we can see with the valve fully front seated, fully counterclockwise, we've now closed off the valve, preventing any more flow from occurring through the compressor. While we have the valve fully front seated, it exposes another feature that you haven't seen yet here, and it's this middle or secondary plunger. With the valve fully front seated, we now see this in the middle where it was normally back in that chamber. That chamber has an orifice that communicates directly to this fitting. That's why we don't need a Schrader core in these types of valves. Because when the valve is back seated, it's cut off from the system with this plunger here. When it's back seated, this goes retreats into that chamber, closing off the communication between the fitting and the system. Why would I want to front seat this valve if it cuts off flow to the system? Why would I want to have my gauges on here yet have cut off communication to the actual system itself? Well, generally with a compressor that needs valves like this, it's going to be on a pretty big system. So if I need to change the compressor out or I need to do something with it 
repair wise, it's a lot more efficient for me to simply isolate the compressor, which then opens communication to this valve to my manifold or directly to my recovery machine. And I can recover just the compressors, refrigerant contents, make my repair, evacuate, and recharge just the compressor. And if you are conducting a compressor replacement altogether, then once you've front seated and recovered the refrigerant from the old compressor, it's as simple as unbolting your suction and discharge valves in order to remove the compressor at this point. So now we've gone over two of the four functions that this valve can accomplish, front seating and fully back seating the valve. Let's go ahead and see what mid seating the valve does for us. Okay, so mid seating the valve simply means that the plunger is now halfway between the fully back seated and fully front seated position. How did I know where to stop? Well, it's easy for me right now because I could see this and what I simply did was look at it honestly and I stopped about halfway. Well, when this is mounted on a compressor, you're not going to have this view. So what I normally will do is start in the fully back seated position and I will count the amount of ratchets I need to do to fully front seat it. Then just divide that number in half and go back that far and you can guarantee you're about halfway. You're close enough to do what you need to do. So what are we doing when we're mid seating this valve? Well, as soon as we took it off the back seat, we immediately were communicating with this fitting. However, to maximize the efficiency and speed of recovery, evacuation and charging, when this is mid seated, it is at its biggest point. You have the biggest opening that communicates with the fitting going to your hoses. And you also have the biggest opening from the actual inlet of the valve going to the rest of the system. So when you are doing repairs to something besides the compressor, which involves recovering the entire system, mid seating is gonna be your fastest way in conjunction with using large diameter hoses, that type of thing, it's going to be the fastest flow in order to uh, accomplish those. When I brought up that there was four functions, really the mid seating is kind of split into two. So mid seating is what I just described before, getting it about halfway to maximize flow and speed. The other kind of sort of same thing as that is what we call cracked off the back seat. And all that is, is from a fully back seated position with this plunger all the way in the back seat. We go ahead and we take our, our service wrench and we just crack it maybe two or three times. Nothing serious. And all we're doing is we're barely cracking that back plunger off. And it allows minimum communication, but it does allow system pressure to be communicated to your gauges. We would use the crack off the back seat if you're just hooking up wireless probes or an analog manifold gauge set to the system to read pressure. There's no need to mid seat it for this. All we need is system pressure. So just cracking it off the back seat accomplishes that. So in review of what we talked about, the valve is a useful tool when used correctly to maximize efficiency and get the most out of your repairs, whether that's using it to isolate components or recover, evacuate and charge quicker. Um, we have four main positions of the valve. We have front seating, back seating, mid seated and then it's kind of little brother cracked off the back seat um, both of those you you could check system pressure by mid seating it but it's just a little bit unnecessary and sometimes in tight quarters it's actually a pain to get your wrench on in the first place so mid seating it is not an efficient way to do that you just need to crack it off that seat one or two turns and you'll be able to read system pressure no problem when you're done you're ready to take your hoses off just go ahead reverse the direction of your ratchet wrench and fully backseat it again, and you've now cut off communication to the system from your hoses. Go ahead and remove your hoses, and you're all set to go. Guys, I really appreciate you watching the video. I hope it brought some clarity to an often confused and misunderstood valve and component that you'll often see in commercial refrigeration, five ton up, really. So uh, coming from residential, that's a difficult component. If you're coming across it by yourself, 
especially the fact it does have a Schrader core in there. It's a little intimidating to put gauges on that and start opening and closing things and not knowing what you're doing exactly. So anyways, I appreciate again you watching. Please comment below if you have any other things like that. Well, you know, what, what confused you when you got into the trade? What, what components weren't explained to you properly and you had to find out for yourself? You know, and a lot of times that ends in disaster, but you know, it's also sometimes the best way to learn. It just sucks when it's on a customer's dime. So by the way, guys, I know I've been a long time since I've been on here. I've had some other little projects going on. It's been a very busy summer on the job at on my real life job. And then on top of that, I've been, you know, starting the HVAC comedy and the vehicle layouts group on Facebook. They've been doing really good. They really took off. And um, I kind of let this slack a little bit. So I apologize for that. For those of you that have subscribed to this channel, hoping for content, I'm going to get back on it. And this will continue to be a channel where I'll put little tips like this once in a while, some tool reviews here and there, and um, just general discussion when I... When something comes along worth talking about, you know, I don't want to put just content out for the sake of it. Even though it's in my interest to be consistent, it's not in your interest to get a bunch of garbage just for me to say that I put a video out every two days. So with that, guys, again, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one. Stay safe.